Welcome everyone. This is Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I will be your mindset coach today. And today we're going to be talking about the importance of your physical, mental, and spiritual health. Recently, I had a guest come on the podcast and they asked, well, what is health to you, Michael? Typically, my guests don't ask me questions. I ask all the questions. It's a bit one-sided. So it's always refreshing when a guest asks me a question or asks my perspective on it. Yes, it can happen in the group episodes. Yes, it can happen in Mindset OD. But in coaching and session, it's always a refreshing experience because it helps me start to think too. Instead of just asking them what is health, what is health to me? And I started to think, well, what is health truly to me? Just as when my brother asked me when I was like 21, 22, 23, around that age, are you happy? And I was like, yeah, I'm happy. And the same thing happened in my mind when someone asked, well, what is health to you? And then I started to say to myself, am I even healthy? Yes, I go to the gym. Yes, I eat healthy. I fast. I eat the right foods. But even then, health is not so much of simply the surface level stuff, right? What you eat, what you do, but rather how you live. There is a whole aspect to it. We're not going to get into this story, but I want to preface the story. It happened a couple months ago. All of this stuff about Jamie Foxx, he was out and, you know, sick or something. People said it was because of the shot. People said it was because of a brain genetic disease or something like that. There was a lot of stuff going on. But he was silent, right? Eventually, he came out with a video. And in the video, he looked very different than what he typically would look like. He was pale. He had lost some weight. You can see in his eyes that he was emotional. What was that emotion, right? That emotion was the spiritual there. He goes on to say that he was fighting for his life. During that time, people can awaken to understand what's truly going on in their life. And in this article that we're going to be breaking down in just a moment, the importance of physical and mental health and spirituality, there is an aspect of understanding life. Typically, people don't understand life until it's flashing in front of them. There was a podcast that I I had watched some of where a guy, he was in the military. And when he's in those foxholes, like those, those dugout holes, when he's fighting against the enemy, and the enemy is approaching, and you're hearing gunshots, and you're hearing explosions. He says it's hard to be an atheist when you're in that foxhole and when you're in that dugout because your life is flashing before your eyes. So you start to think is there more to life than what is happening right now, than what I'm living? And most people, as I said early on in the podcast, I say it all the time in the podcast, people typically don't take action until they have a trauma, until they have a hardship, until there is no other choice but for them to rise, but for them to pay attention. And so today I'm going to offer you an opportunity to pay attention, not only to my words or if you read this blog, but to understand that life has so much potential. Life has so much opportunity and life can be an aspect of who we can become rather than who we are now. So let's get into that blog right now so I can begin to give a little bit of preface and then we can have a discussion. All right, everyone, if you're new to the channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and to share this video and your audio, and especially this one with people who might not be taking health seriously, who might be ignoring their health, who might not be in a good place right now. They're fighting for their life. That's going to be almost everybody because when it comes to making sure that you have good physical, mental, and spiritual health. Maybe 8 to 10% of people probably have it under control, down packed. They don't need any help. But what about the other 90% of people? Do we just allow them to struggle with their physical, mental, and spiritual? Why do you think in our world today so many people struggle with being in shape? They struggle with depression and anxiety and fear. And then they don't believe that their life is meaningful. All of that is going to stem from they don't understand how to find a proper harmony or balance in health. Because your physical health does not have to be a super big bodybuilder with all these huge muscles or this super skinny person that could run marathons, 100 mile marathons. 
you don't have to be that person. You can be your physical, meaning you can look the way you want to look. We all have a vision in our mind of how we would like to look. If you do not have it, then you have not practiced visualization. Like visualization is just looking at, all right, where do I want to be? How you look is also a part of it. I think when people look at visualization, they just look at it from a first person point of view. All right, you know, in my eyes, I see this, but they don't take it to a third person point of view or second person point of view and say, okay, what do I see? How do I look? Right? That's not there now. So we have to switch that when we use our visualization. How do we look? How do we feel? That's important. And then our mental state. Do we feel confident? Do we feel hopeful, optimistic? Are we pessimistic? Are we a downer? Are we depressed, worried, stressed? Whatever our mental state is, what's going on? How do we fix it? And then the spiritual where I don't necessarily talk about spiritual health too much on the podcast because I understand that spirituality can be a talking point that can turn people away, especially when they're living in a life that might not be abundant. So they're like, if life is so hard, wouldn't there be a being that would make my life easy? So we put off the blame onto someone else. But like I said, it's hard to be atheist when you're in the foxhole. So when you're down and out and your life is flashing before your eyes, your spiritual starts to rise. But I talk about spiritual health in this article that spiritual is not just about religion. Spiritual is more so of what we are trying to bring into the world, what we're trying to get out of it too. So we surround ourselves with people who make us feel good. It's the easiest way I can explain it. For example, if you have like a good friend And after you hang out with that friend, maybe even a family member, you hang out with them and you say, that was an an enriching experience for me. I feel fulfilled. I feel full. You feel good. That's spiritual, right? Because maybe you went to the gym, got your physical. Maybe you had a good discussion and it invoked a good mental, but spiritual, how you left leaving the relationship or that meeting, or that interaction with that individual. That right there can be spiritual. Spiritual is not just about religion. I think many people get the two mixed up. Yes, spiritual can be religion, but today we can also look at spiritual as, is my cup full also? So we're going to be breaking all of these steps down just right now. So when we start to break down each of these steps, because I think it's important not just to talk about it in a blanket sense, but then to also talk about it in a physical sense. Now, I do go into detail in the blog with each of these steps, so the physical, the mental, and spiritual, and I do it in a different way than I am going to be doing now, so I encourage you to read this article. The link is in the description box below. You can always head over to reverendconcepts.com, head over to blogs, and it's going to be right on top depending on when you listen to this. What is physical, right? Physical is going to be how you appear to yourself, to the world. Physical is going to be maybe how you feel, right? Because if you are maybe a little bit sluggish, lethargic, that can be physical. It can also be mental, but in the sense of physical first. Physical is saying, do you have the capabilities to do what you wish to do? And I said that when I was asked by my guest, well, what is health to you? I said, well, health to me is, because I'm thinking physical, because physical is such a huge proponent to me, to my growth, to what I'm trying to accomplish in the world. I need a good physical, because I understand if I want to accomplish something in this life, I need to have a vessel, uh, you know, a vehicle, my body, that's going to help transport me there. If I do not have a strong body, let alone a strong mind, I cannot get there. Or if I do get there, how long will it take me? The physical is more than just looking good to people. Because we can look good and we can still feel terrible on the inside. We can feel like we're not enough. We can feel that we're not perfect and we still need to do some work. I understand. But we can start to look at our physical in the sense of, do I have what I need every single day to make a difference, to make a change, to level up. 
For me, one of my goals each day is to be better than I was the day before. Some days I fail. Some days I don't make it. And it's not so much of the physical, but more of the mental. Because it could be a lot of work, especially with doing what I'm doing, trying to change the world, running so many shows, so many different things, having a family, the stress of the world. It can get to you sometimes, and sometimes it can inhibit you taking action. But if you can remind yourself of the bigger purpose, of why you do things, then you're going to say, hmm, maybe I should be a little bit more deliberate. I understand that things are not going exactly my way, but that is not the point of life to have everything perfect. Life is about imperfection, right? Finding the moments in life where you can find some joy. There are so many stories that come to my mind when it comes to perspective when we're looking at something. And when I look at myself in the mirror, I might see someone who's tired, stressed out, but still ambitious, still hungry, but maybe a little bit fearful. How do I get my physical to give me the energy, to give me the discipline, because you have to have discipline if you want to have a good physical, to get me over that hump? So I start to think, well, do I have to diet? Do I have to figure out different habits to how I eat? Because dieting can be one of those uh, terms that people don't necessarily like. Because dieting is like you diet for like a month or two or three or whatever to get to a goal weight. And then all of a sudden you gain all the weight back. That's why keto diets and like paleo and whole 30s and stuff like that. Those diets are not long term, right? Those fad diets, they don't work for the physical because it's a momentary thing in our mind. You say you're going to do it for a little bit, and then you're going to stop. Now, unless you're like that 8 to 10%, as I said, you're going to be put into that pool where you think that dieting is just a momentary thing. But instead of dieting, you have to say life change. Am I going to have a life change to get a different physical? Because you have to figure out how, how much energy do I need in my day? For example, I'm a parent. I have a kid. He runs around. I have stuff in the house he can break and like plants and stuff he's trying to rip up and I'm like Jesus you know I have to be able to catch him I have to be quick on my feet but if I have you know bad knees and bad joints and things like along those natures or I'm too big and I and I can't get up quickly I can't keep him safe and that is a no-no for me my physical has to be on par with him now I understand that Kids are super fast, and he might be able to one day beat me, but it's not going to be today. It's not going to be tomorrow or next year or in five years or in 10 years, maybe in 15 years. Then he can beat me because at that point, he's safe. I'm a little bit older. I'm more conscious to making sure my physical remains good where I don't mind hurting myself for no reason. But all of that is stemming from making sure my physical is at the point that everything is going to be good, that I can live my life the way I see it rather than, oh, I don't have enough energy because I haven't been doing the things that I should be. I wasn't disciplined enough. I wasn't eating the right foods. I wasn't working out. That right there needs to be taken care of. Physical is so important. And then we get into the aspect of mental. I spoke about a little bit of mental when you look in the mirror and you see yourself, you're just stressed, you're overwhelmed. The world is on your shoulders and you need to figure out how can I triumph? It's a hard pill to swallow sometimes when you have to ask for help, right? Now, I don't necessarily have to ask for help because I have mentors and coaches and I can confide in them. I can tell them what's going on. And they can help me with insight. There is a notion that therapy and, and coaching are very similar. Now, the aspect of therapy and coaching is you talk to somebody, yes. But therapy is very different than coaching. When you are trying to work with a coach of any caliber, dating coach, health coach, fitness coach, executive coach, whatever the coach. You are looking to elevate yourself. 
how can you bring out the best version of yourself through coaching rather than therapy is more of how can I understand myself so I can live and be at peace with myself? We do need both. I believe that when you coach through your purpose and you have a mission, you can easily find a reason to get past your emotional. Not every single day you're going to be motivated to wake up. Not every single day you're going to be ambitious and you're going to want to make those calls and to do those hard moments of your day because they might not feel good. However, you do it because of a greater purpose. So when you can define why you do the things you do, your mental starts to align itself with the bigger picture, with the true mission that you give yourself. When we look at the genders really quickly, because I think there is an aspect of a different mental here, the physical, yes, bodies are different too, but the aspect of mental, I think, is going to be a greater disparity between men and women. Women are more emotional, and there's nothing wrong with that. Because I believe if you are a woman, you need that emotion to raise a child, to put, a, you know, to have a child and to carry them for nine months and then to give birth to pain of labor. That takes a mindset of I care about whatever I'm bringing into this world. Now, the male should be in the picture too and saying, I need to protect this woman. I need to protect this child. That should be a mindset too. Something that is lost today. To give birth and then you just fall in love, that maternal instinct, it's a different mental there. You have to be emotional. You have to be caring. It's almost a self-sacrifice. You lose sleep. You might go a little bit stir crazy. But at the end of it, you can be proud of what you did. It might not happen the first year. It might not happen the second year. It might be 21 years when the kid finally leaves your house and you're like, wow, the house is empty now. And I remember when I had left my house to Texas, you know, I was the last one to leave the house because I was in college. I was the only one to graduate college. And I basically had to make a choice. I was like, all right, I can stay with my parents and go to college and work to pay through college, or I can go out and live my life, get my apartment, start a family, things along those lines. I decided to get my education. It was just a different path. So I was the last one to leave the house. And I remember the day I left the house, my mom was crying because she was just like, all the kids are gone. The only thing she had was her dog at the time, her husband, my father, and you know herself. She didn't have any more people in the nest. I'm sure at some point in her life early on, she probably said, oh, you know, it's going to be nice when the kids are not around and I finally get the house to myself. But today, you know, she, she probably misses that where she can see her kids all the time and we're all together. Because I know my father, he talks about it all the time when I go up and visit. He's like, wow, like I didn't think this was going to happen so soon or again or, or or something along those lines and so it's always a pleasure to see that right that's the mental aspect there because we have that emotional connection between family and you have to understand that you have to be mentally fortified in order to take action so your big purpose can be i'm going to do the best i can so my child can be good that, that, that could be your purpose but your mental has to also be greater than just the purpose you give yourself for your child, right? You have to give yourself a purpose for the world. What type of mental do you need in order to achieve the things that you wanted to achieve before you had children? And yes, right? Our mindset might change. Our mindset might adjust. And there's nothing wrong with that. But we do have to do a good job at maintaining our mental so we can stay sane the entire process. And that process is going to be our growth and our development. If we have a strong mental, we can have a strong physical. If we have a strong mental, then we can start to work on the spiritual. We do need to have at least a strong mental to work on the spiritual. The physical can be a different part. However, when you can find harmony between all three, you're going to find that the spiritual is going to be so much more meaningful. The reason being is that if there's something that's not perfect in your life, 
for example, you're super stressed out, the mental. Maybe you want to lose some weight, you have been stress eating, and so your physical is not where it's supposed to be. So you're self-conscious to how you look, to how you feel. So you might not want to be as spiritual because your life is not as you envision. However, just because you envision your life a certain way, it doesn't mean that that vision cannot become reality. That's the belief that comes with spirituality. We talked about the aspect of being around people and they fill up your cup. If you listen to this podcast, I can hope that when you're listening to the podcast, you have a semblance of hope, of aspirations, of motivation, of, of an understanding of discipline maybe, where you start to take more action. From the group episodes to the individual episodes to the interviews with other coaches that we do here, it's an opportunity for you to awaken. I always say that the book that changes your life is not the book that changed your life. The people that change your life might not be the people that exactly change your life. It might be an accumulation of the two. All the books you have read, finally the book that you read changed your life. That was the book that did it. But the accumulation of everything before that. The same thing with these episodes. The accumulation of listening to podcasts, of listening to coaching and session, let alone just you know any podcast, you are going to find that each episode, there's a little nugget, there's a little flake of gold. And then if you know anything about you know finding gold in a river, right? There's just like little flakes. And you might say that's worthless. The mind will say that. But gold is gold. And if you can get enough flakes, melt it all down into one gold bar, you can find something that's valuable. Most people are not willing to take the flakes and make a gold bar. Most people are not willing to take a seed, plant it in the ground, water it, and wait for it to grow. Spirituality holds an aspect to understanding that the things in life can take time. It comes to the point of spirituality can come to a realization that life is already really, really good. And you start to look at life is really good, but I want to enhance it. How do I enhance it? And when you can find that deep belief, that deep understanding of who you can become, then you start to think in a higher sense. Now, you might start to think, that there's a greater being, a higher purpose, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when you can give yourself a sense of purpose, drive, ambition, whatever you want to call it, right? That spiritual aspect, you're going to find that the balance that you're trying to create between physical and mental starts to mold in a way that everything is a package deal. It's almost like when you purchase something from a box store, say Ikea, right? You would hope everything's in the box. Sometimes in life, things are not as simple as that. Our physical might not be in the box and we have to go get that individual piece and then incorporate it into what we're trying to finish. Same thing with our mental. Same thing with our spiritual. It's almost like you go to a restaurant and everything is a la carte. Everything's individual, but there is a magic and a synergy that has to happen between all three. That, you know, the triad of, you know, the importance of physical, mental, and spiritual health. That balance or that harmony that you try to create can help you do more in life. But you have to first understand what does physical mean for you? What does a good, strong mental mean for you? And what does spirituality mean for you? If you can define those, then you can begin to get to work. So in closing, the importance of physical, mental, and spiritual health, as written in this blog, is going to be a guidepost for helping you understand the differences, helping you define what is physical for you, what is mental for you, and what is spiritual health to you. Now, everyone's going to have a different perspective after reading this. People are going to have a different perspective after listening to this episode of the podcast because you are going to find that what your physical is or your mental is or your spiritual is might be different 
than the person next to you or the person before you or someone in your family or a friend or a coworker. It doesn't necessarily matter the person. All that matters is it is true to what you're trying to do in this life. What do you want to accomplish with your physical, your mental, and your spiritual? And when you can define that, then you can start to live in a different manner. Your mindset is going to start to change. Your actions are going to start to change. You are going to become a bit more deliberate in how you operate. I know it's not going to be pretty some days. I know sometimes you are going to be asking yourself, is this worth it? The days in the gym, struggling, sweating, the soreness of the muscles after a workout, the mental, the fatigue, the stress, the worry. Can you get over that? And the spiritual, is this even worth it? And I can tell you that it is going to be worth it. It might not be easy in the beginning, but life is not supposed to be easy. No one said life was going to be easy. And if they did, they have lied to you. Life is supposed to be full of challenges and trials because those help you elevate yourself. Those make you a better person. We do not grow only from our successes. We grow from our failures too. So if you have failed in your physical or if you're struggling in your mental or if you're trying to find an understanding of spiritual, there are going to be people who can help you, mentors, coaches, guides. Those people are going to be not only assisting you through the process, but enhancing your life in all areas. As always, we love to help people here at Reverend Concepts. We have many different types of services, coaching programs that help people reach better states of their life, whether it be their physical, mental, or spiritual. We aim to create customized, individualized plans for people. So at the end of it, they get exactly what they needed not just a blanket surface level type of coaching. We go so much more deeper. And that is what makes us different here at Irreverent Concepts. What we do here on Coaching in Session is we bring you the value and you can understand the worth. Because as we progress through time, you're going to realize that you have more years behind you than in front of you. And it could be a scary point because our mind, our life, we want to keep it going. But we do have to ask a question, a deep question. Are you just living? Are you just moving through time? Are you trying to create some level of happiness for today, not for tomorrow? Life is more than just that. Because we are going to be dead longer than we're going to be alive. So we have to start to ask ourselves, if not us, then who? Who's going to change our life? Whose life can we change? Because we can definitely change more lives if we focus on making sure we are in the best physical, mental, spiritual health. And when you do that, you're going to start to see that everything starts to fall in line. And it's going to be something that you have to experience first, I believe. Because I can say it all day long. You're like, huh? Wait, what? I got to do this? Huh? There is a purpose behind the actions. There is a madness behind what we do. However, some people just need to define that madness a little bit better. So as always, like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and then reach out to us at reverendconcepts.com. If you're looking for coaching, we offer free consultations, and we want you to be in the best place possible. My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. If you have any questions, you can email me, coachingincession at gmail.com, and I'll see everyone on the next episode of Coaching In Session. Until then, everyone take care.